Hi, I'm Patrick, and welcome to Tiny Tanks. This is a place where we look at uh, 1 16th scale RC tanking and uh, all the different aspects into it. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, Vandra M7 Priest conversion kit for the Hanglong uh, M4A3 Sherman. Um, it's a challenging kit. It's uh, not for beginners. Um, but I'm going to take you through it and uh, show you how I did my build. I, I changed things up a little bit and uh, we'll look at the different challenges here. So Vandra model kits are, uh, from what I understand, produced in Hungary and then they're shipped over here to the United States and we have a distributor here um, who would then ship them to you. So there's a lot of world traveling going on with this kit and it is made from resin and resin can be somewhat brittle if you if it's uh, impacted real hard. So Needless to say here, my kit didn't really survive the trip, but not to worry, it's resin, it uh, takes very well to contact cement, a little bit of sanding, and uh, it'll be good as new. And as you can see here, we got the uh, parts repaired. Um, there's still some, uh, some putty work to be done and sanded, that'll uh, come a little bit later. But this will give you a good view of all the different parts that come with this. Now this is a an M7 build that's more early to mid-war. I am going to be doing an M7B1 conversion. Um, and I'm going to, so I'm going to be using a lot of the parts off the uh, Hang Long tank. Um, I'll get in and show you what, what parts were removed. But if your kit if you get a resin kit and it's broken like this, don't worry. It's it's a very easy, quick repair to be made. Um, it's a so don't fret over it. So um, first things first, uh, we uh, took take the uh, donating vehicle, this uh, Hang Long M4A3. And you notice that here the gearbox that's on the right is the standard gearbox that comes with it. Now it's too high to use with the M7 Priest, so we need to use a low profile gearbox. I was kind of lucky, I had an extra set laying around. Um, these are plastic gears, but I'll use them until they strip, and then whenever they strip, I'll just replace the gearboxes out with some better quality ones. But for now, why not get the use out of the, of the plastics? And with the uh, gearboxes installed, we're going to go in here with the Dremel. We're going to cut out the battery box. We're going to seal that door in nice and tight with some uh, adhesive, uh, clear out all the rest of the wiring and everything like that, and uh, give ourselves a place to uh, build from. Um, one of the uh, chief differences between the uh, M7 and the M7B1 is that the M7B1 was powered by the 4GAA V8, not the uh, Continental 9-cylinder radial engine that the M7, and therefore would have different rear uh, decks. So, in order to accomplish this, use, we scavenged the uh, uh, rear deck area uh, from the M4A3 Sherman, uh, the Hang Long kit, and we're going to cut that out and we're going to end up putting it into the M7 uh, Vandra model kit. And that uh, once we got the uh, uh, the scavenged deck lid matched up to the Vandra model kit, you notice we kept the um, the weld lines uh, that was important. They had really beautiful uh, weld lines in here and I wanted to keep those. Uh, there's some gapping and stuff that's going to be uh, filled in with some model clay, but uh, all in all, it matched up very, very nicely. Since I uh, scavenged the uh, rear deck and then included the rear uh, lights, which were also still historically accurate, um, as long as, along with the LEDs, I went ahead and scavenged the front LEDs and lights off of the uh, um, off the front of the Hang Long kit, and just to simply uh, unsoldering the wires and tapping out the uh, LEDs and I'll show you later on how they got reinstalled. And next thing is uh, a rough test fit of the um, the hull. The The Vandra kit is in two pieces. There's an outer hull, there's an inner hull and they kind of fit together and, and um, you'll see later on how those are actually going to connect to the lower hull from the Hang Long. But uh, a good test fit to kind of see where everything lines up, start to mark it off, um, and uh, so that you can proceed with your build. So in the kit there's going to be a lot of different things that require either hinges or um, 
require different um, like uh, handles and stuff like this. You can see I use some very very thin copper wire. I like the copper because it just it, you can it's easily bendable, moves in place. Um, in a very very small drill, uh, you can find these at most hobby stores. Uh, you can find them on Amazon. They come with a whole set of little drill bits. You got to very carefully tap these holes with the drill bit, and then run your wire through it, and then cut your wire at each end, kind of give it a little bit of a bend cut it glue it and then you got a working hinge so since i was going to have a 50 cal on here and, and i was using the hang long um 6.0 uh control box uh, i wanted to take advantage of using the both the led light function and sound effects for that 50 cal so in order to do this i was going to have to install an led and fiber optics um, into the 50 cal let me show you how we did that so in order to accomplish this, the um, gun had to be cut up in three parts. So you had the end of the barrel, the mid barrel, and then the um, the weapon itself the, uh, after the barrel. And this gave short enough areas so that you could use the little micro drill to drill holes through these little barrels parts. Be very, very careful and run this little fiber optic tubing um, from one end of the gun to the other. And I'll show you in the next slide how that was done. And so here we've um, uh, finished drilling out the barrels. We've threaded the fiber optic through it. Where we're going to reattach the barrels using uh, a little bit of contact cement, a little bit of putty, just to kind of smooth everything off, give a nice continuous flow to it, um, so it doesn't you don't see any seams in the barrel. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, tap out the bottom of the of the uh, base of the gun, so we can drop an LED in there and wire it in. And I do have a video of it, so let me post that up in here. So essentially what we're going to do now with the main gun, which I have mocked up here in this photo, is that we're going to drill a hole from one end of the barrel to the other, and then right before we see the barrel meets, meets the breech, there's going to be a hole tapped down just going south and through the, uh, through the recoil rail, and that'll drop the wire down into the inside of the tank um, and fed to the control box. Uh, this barrel does not need to be cut into pieces uh, because we're dealing with a larger barrel. Uh, we can start to tap with the micro screw or with the micro drill, and then we can finish it off with a longer regular drill bit using a drill. Just be very, very careful. Go slow. Remember, uh, resin can be a little bit brittle if, if you put too much pressure to it. I'm just uh, going to show you what I did with um, as kind of a modification for the M7 Priest. Uh, conversion kit for the Sherman. So I was trying to figure out how to put this hull onto here and kind of give it some access. So what I did is I tapped rare earth magnets on the sides. Pops right up. Kind of hard to do a little one-handed. Go and it just snaps back in. Now, when um, get ready to fasten everything, this is going to go on. Then uh, get this out of the way. And then that will all be glued and secured on the sides and all the way across the back. So this whole piece will. Uh, just lift off together as one section and give complete access to the hull. Um, the only thing I got going over here is that the um, there'll be four lights, uh, tail lights, uh, the machine gun light, the cannon LED flash, and the headlights. We'll so I'll have to pull those four out. But everything else should be staying down in the hull. Um, still haven't tried to figure out whether or not whether I'm going to make this cannon move on trying to work in a micro servo but it wants to move it really aggressively all right so now the wires are ran for the machine gun the wires are ran for the cannon the wires are ran for the lights 
it's time to start dressing out the tank and doing all the cosmetic work to it. So start uh, adding the gun into the uh, into the inside of the motor carriage, the ammo racks, all the interior stuff. You notice that there's some sheet styrene here where I've built in the uh, racks for the radios. Uh, shout out to Dave Taylor over in England. Uh, sent me the uh, the uh, files to make the radios. Um, 3D printed the uh, stowage bin for the uh, for the 105 millimeter howitzer sight, uh, the M1 Grand racks that you see in the uh, kind of pulpit for the uh, 50 cal, uh, there on the right, those are the uh, there's three racks there for uh, M1 Grands that also had the 3D print. So this is just a lot of cosmetic work, basic modeling, kind of getting everything to a rough point to where you can start to prime everything um, and uh, start to finish out the tank. And before uh, putting any primer down, uh, or even our first coat of primer, um, there's a lot of putty work to be done to repair the damage uh, that had occurred, as well as any kind of gaps to give a nice consistent even feel. These handles that you see on the side, this is piano wire. Um, you can buy it off of uh, Amazon. You can go to most hobby stores, they usually carry it there as well too. It's a very stiff wire. Um, so I just tapped out the holes a little bit deeper, ran the, uh, bent the wires to the right length, and popped them in uh, using some contact cement. Uh, this is after I got everything all nice and smooth on the side. Um, and then it was uh, once all the all the putty work, everything was all nice and smooth, gaps were filled, everything looking good, it was going to be uh, time for primer. Here I um, used a, 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 a kind of a medium gray primer. Uh, it's a, we wanted, needed a very uh, even color to start from because we had uh, you know, we had olive drab on the original hang along. We had gray from the veranda, from the resin, um, putty work that went into it. So all these multitude of different colors needed to all be evened out into one coat, and also gives us nice good uh, adherence for um, the uh, uh, for the uh, rest of the paint to stick to. Also, when you're putting on your um, coat, you can start to see little imperfections. Like if you notice, this is just the first coat, but you see I still had an imperfection on that hull up, up near the driver's spot. Um, that was identified, and then we could kind of putty, you know, sand it down, add some putty in, and, and, and kind of fix that as we went. Once given sufficient time, usually about 24 hours, you want to have your primer dry, especially if it's a... Um, like it's in like rattle can or something like that because uh, you really want that stuff to dry because if there's any kind of off gassing it's going to cause your paint to kind of crack. Um, uh, once that's uh, the primer's dry and you can go ahead and start putting paint decals uh, in your detail items um, like you've kind of seen here. Um, I have uh, uh, added in my different storage areas. Uh, I've, you know, I included a driver with a seat so that you didn't kind of see that. You can see the M1 Grand rifles that I 3D printed in there. Um, they're in the background along with ammo boxes. You can kind of see the wire that comes off the 50 cal. Um, I did paint that olive drab to kind of hide it away a little bit. Um, I haven't done any washes at this point. I'm just kind of leaving things very basic colors and then kind of adding shadow and effect where I kind of feel like it needs to happen. Um, the radios uh, just painted black, dry brushed, um, some gloss white in there for some of the gauges. Added some wires and uh, for the uh, antenna and for the uh, handset. Again, you can see the driver in there. He's kind of just kind of setting back up in there. Um, again, hiding that uh, um, the gearbox so it looks nice and consistent even through there. It's very challenging when you're uh, having to do a detailed interior into an RC vehicle. All right, and then uh, once your details and um, storage and all the little it's a bits and parts and stuff that go into the tank are uh, finally there, you can finally finish it off with uh, some weathering. As you can see, uh, I don't go for a whole lot of like mud and gunk and all that kind of stuff on the. I usually just do a very light dusting on the for my weathering. I may add a little bit of wet mud around the wheels, um, a wash here and there where uh, it needs to happen. Um, you can see the, you know, there's the M1 Grand Rifles. I've used a little bit of a wash on the floor to kind of darken the interior, um, just so it would have a different contrast than the color on the outside, as the color on the outside would probably have been sun washed a little bit more and abused a little bit more than the interior on the inside. Um, 
go through, add a little bit of rust to the bolts. Um, you can do some panel lining um, to to bring out this. Some ink washes around where like the uh, where where bolts and stuff must. So it shows some recessing and uh, reset. So the bolts show that they're kind of recessed and shadow in there. Um, you can see I did make this kind of a convertible, so I do have a removable poles and um, camo top that I can take on and off of it. So whether I want to have the top on or top off, I can do that um, and then uh, store it when I don't need it. You can see the hatch is open now and uh, drivers in there and um, it kind of makes for a nice little bit of realism. I'm going to add a couple more guys once I get them in um, and they'll uh, add a little bit more realism to the inside as well. Uh, all in all, it's a really fun build. Uh, it's very challenging. There's a lot of work to be done on it, um, but I had a good time with this thing. And uh, I was, uh, I'll post it here a quick little video at the end of this um, of it running. Well, thank you guys all for um, uh, watching along with the video. I hope you got gained a little bit. This wasn't meant to be a tutorial on how to build it, just some of the challenges and things that you can do with it. I'm sure there's a lot of other model builders out there that can do a lot better work than I can. Um, I'm hoping to get some of you guys on the channel and maybe share some of your work out with people. If you liked the video, please hit the like and subscribe and hit the bell. It always kind of helps the uh, um, algorithms uh, shoot more of these videos to you as I'm always kind of making more content. Um, so thank you guys very much and uh, happy tanking.